welcome to another Audio Epic Storytelling Podcast episode. And uh, this week, the topic is humor. Um, you know, we've discussed some some elements of horror and, uh, you know, last week with the vampires. So we thought this week, let's go completely the other direction and talk about uh, funny stuff. Funny stuff, yeah. And of course, humor is a very uh, delicate subject. It's very personal as well. So we're going to try and give our opinion on what works in uh, funny stories or funny yeah. elements in storytelling. And indeed, as you say, it's personal. So, uh, you know, what, what we think is funny, uh, other people might completely disagree. It is indeed a very difficult topic to discuss because on the one hand, people have such different tastes and you really can't say your sense of humor is wrong. You know, it's, something makes you laugh or it doesn't. And yeah. that's just the way it is, you right. know. So, um, but okay, um, my first question for you, Elin, is what, according to you, are the three funniest movies you've ever seen? Huh. Okay, that's, that's a very hard one, because there are a lot of funny movies, uh, but at the same time, it's really difficult to, uh, to find a movie that really made me laugh out loud. Hmm. So, I'm going to say it's... Um, one is The Wedding Singer, the second, uh, Music and Lyrics, uh, both are, uh, I think, romantic comedies, and the third one is uh, Team America World Police. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a romantic comedy, that no. one. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I know it's very politically incorrect, but I, I can't help it, I'm sorry, but... I you're I, not sorry. <laughs> I really think it's a very funny movie. <laughs> no, I mean, so, I, I was expecting you to mention some romantic comedies. Um, but, um, so, yeah, but there are tons of romantic comedies out there. Why these two? Why The Wedding Singer and um, Music and Lyrics, right? Yeah, um, well, The Wedding Singer um, is a, a very special special one I think I think there's a lot of romantic comedies and and they're all okay but not all of there are really bad ones they're, yeah there are really <laughs> bad ones but there are only some of them that really really make me laugh and and feel for the characters and and um, and those two romantic comedies are are examples of that in the wedding singer you have these um, this kind of low life who wants to be um, an artist, but he sings uh, at weddings instead, and his relationships is gone bad, and um, it's it's really a story where you can feel for the character, and and what's what's um, a funny part immortalized by none other than Adam Sandler. Yeah, Adam Sandler. Not that I'm a particular fan of Adam Sandler, but in this movie, I really I love his performance. He's, uh, he's a bit silly and, and, and cute at the same time. And um, what I think is particularly funny about this movie is the way it handles 80s elements. Um, I think it's really recognizable, the typical things from the 80s, like the yeah, clothing. It, it was made in the 2000s, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and the songs, um, it's, it's really funny. Um, because of that, I think. So the move, the whole movie is kind of a parody of the eighties. Yeah, I I think so. Um, I I see I see it that way. Yeah, to be honest, uh, when first you mentioned uh, that movie, uh, the wedding singer, just by the title, I thought this is going to be crap. I mean, it sounded like a run of the mill romantic comedy. Didn't think I was going to like it, but then I saw it, and uh, and I agree, it really is a funny movie. It's not your typical romantic comedy. In a way, it kind of gently mocks the genre, I would say. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it, that's what I yeah. like about it. It kind of... Um, it has all the typical romantic comedy cliches, but it handles them in such a way yeah. that they kind of... They don't take themselves seriously. Yeah. It's a kind of tongue-in-cheek yeah. uh, feel yeah. to it. Yeah, exactly. It's, it, that makes it f feel different than other romantic comedies, which yeah. are very serious about being romantic comedies. You don't know how much I need you While you're near me I don't feel blue And when we kiss I know you need me too But it all was bullshit. It was 
you've done to me. And I think for the same reasons, I love uh, music and lyrics so much. That's um, that's one with uh, Hugh Grant, right? Yeah. Imagine that romantic comedy with <laughs> Hugh Grant. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> never happened, right? <laughs> Uh, I, I like that one in particular because um, it's it's really well done and it has all the the typical it has a typical format of a romantic comedy as well. Maybe it's a coincidence, but it's also with Drew Barrymore. Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, and I think she she adds a bit of innocence to those movies, a very charming kind of innocence that I really like, and uh, it's also. A kind of 80s parody so maybe it's because i like yeah there's definitely an parody of that yeah um what i love about this movie is that the songs are really well written and the this the, you have this um you grant used to be in a pop band which was very popular but um they split up and now he's trying to uh find a career again but it's really hard i never thought that i could be so satisfied And then he meets this uh, girl, uh, played by Drew Barrymore, Sophie, who um, who was not really a big fan of his, but um, she helps him write lyrics uh, to a new song because there's this new idol, Cora, who makes really, right. really weird songs. <laughs> a bit, bit of a kind of spiritual girl. Um, she's very popular with the youth and she, she used to be a fan of his and she wants him to write a song to, to do a duet actually in her big show so that that would save his career and uh, that's where Sophie comes in because he's very bad with lyrics and uh, she helps him out and of course they kind of uh, there's a romantic tension there so it has all the typical an elements but it's really funny because it it parodies all these '80s and '90s elements as well. The songs from and, and pop are really it, it 80s very like. much parodies contemporary pop music. Yeah, too. Yeah, in, indeed. It really mocks, um, you know, things like what have you, Rihanna and. Yeah, but at the same time, those the the songs that occur in the in the movie are really well done. Got no job. Sometimes I just sit down and sob. Hmm. The lyrics are ve very well written, uh, the, the melodies are, are awesome, so hmm. the music is very well done, only the, the texts are ridiculous. That's what makes it brilliant, Yeah, I think. Oh, uh, well, uh, and, and the, the third one, uh, Team America, I think is so funny because I think because of the, the music as well. It uses instrumental music often. Um, and and it's it's really it's a great soundtrack. I think Team America. Um, I mean, it's it's obviously political satire, but it's also a parody of the big blockbuster action movie. Yeah. And um, and the music is a good example of good blockbuster action music. Exactly. It takes its the music takes itself seriously. It it kind of refers to Thunderbirds as well. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, there are a lot of recognizable elements in them, as in the the movie as well. Uh, one of the I never expected this to be a funny moment in the movie, but there's this this um, scene where he he's like really he has a nervous breakdown. He is he's completely destroyed. He's sad, and he he drinks uh, in a pub, and then he comes out and he has to puke. And there's this very serious dramatic music that you would expect in a very serious dramatic scene. Because it's there to show that, you know, he's, he's hit rock bottom. He yeah. gave up on life. He gave up on life. <laughs> <laughs> and then he starts puking and it just never ends. It keeps yeah. coming and coming and it's so and silly. And the music keeps on getting more and more <laughs> dramatic. It's so silly and stupid and usually I would never laugh at something like that. But it's because of the dramatic music that I was like yeah. crying. And the sort of in-your-face <laughs> symbolism when there's this guy who walks by and he says, 
You gave up on life, didn't you? <laughs> Yeah, what I what I I mean, Team America. It has I have to say, it comes with a warning. It's it's there's very vulgar stuff in it, and I don't yeah. like I don't like vulgar humor at all. But Indeed. for Team America, I have to sort of um, I could have done without the vulgarities, but there is really good satire in that movie, really good humor. Um, and what I love about it is that it parodies. Uh, a genre but it doesn't spoof particular scenes from particular movies right yeah you recognize all the elements like i've seen this in movies but not i've seen this in that particular movie and that makes the humor as as puerile as it is actually intelligent right and and uh, i think the conclusion is that i love parody especially when it doesn't try to uh, market itself towards youngsters by uh, putting in rap music and and drugs and 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 sex and and cigarettes and and the whole the whole thing and unnecessary sex scenes like like scary movie did there were these these bizarre scenes that had nothing to do with I, horror movies but... i loathe and despise <laughs> scary movie and all those movies that end with the word movie i think it had a, a couple of things that were funny no like three, no it has no redeeming features three scenes of a couple of seconds maybe but i i didn't really like it either <laughs> oh i i really hate those movies <laughs> Really? Well, I, I don't think I, I've seen the rest of them. I, I only, uh, I've only seen Scary Movie, and I don't think I've seen the other. Uh, yeah, movie, the thing is, with, uh, I, I saw, I, I saw the trailer, for example, for that movie, epic movie that they did, and it was so cringy because what they do is they take scenes from movies that you instantly recognize because you know they're so clearly from that particular movie, like. You know, a guy dressed up as Jack Sparrow. Mm -hmm. So okay, that's that's from Pirates of the Caribbean because Can it's it be Jack Sparrow. Jack Sparrow. Haha, -ha, I recognize Jack Sparrow, but then he starts rapping, and then that's funny because Jack Sparrow is rapping. Haha, -ha, I get it <laughs> because Jack Sparrow doesn't rap in the real Pirates of the Caribbean, but here he does. Oh, that's so <laughs> funny. You know, that that just makes me angry, that well, stuff. I think uh, a lot of people do think it's funny because it's recognizable, but it doesn't do it for me. That's not... I think it's very important um, that situations are recognizable in, in movies, and that makes it funny. But that's not the only criteria, I mm. would say, that you need to, for a scene to be funny. So I'll ask you a question now. Okay. Uh, what, in your opinion, are the three funniest uh, video games that you've played? Video games? Okay, that's something completely different. Well, I've played a bunch of video games and most of them are very serious, I have to say. But there are a few ones that I thought were genuinely funny. And um, mostly they were older games. Uh, I think, I'm thinking of the Monkey Island mm -hmm. series, um, the old point-and-click adventure games those were funny because again there was an element of playing with uh, all the typical cliches surrounding pirates hmm. but also making it making pirates who are all who are always cast as these vicious threatening types actually quite harmless okay so you had a duel in the game but it instead of actually fighting it was a duel of insults <laughs> so the, the most original insults or the most insulting insults uh, won the fights. Um, stuff like that. Uh, and then there was also um, Space Quest was another series that was, I thought, really funny. Also a point and click adventure, um, you know, no action scenes at all. Uh, but the whole thing was, was a parody of the science fiction genre. Um, it was kind of like Futurama before Futurama existed and um, because in, in that game you were uh, Roger Wilco the space janitor <laughs> yeah so <laughs> you're, you're just a janitor 
Uh, but you you wind up in all these crazy situations and you go on all kinds of adventures. Uh, you become a captain of your own ship uh, by coincidence. Um, <laughs> a janitor as a hero. Yeah, and and the 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 tagline uh, was in space, no one can hear you clean. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's kind of lame, but but what what I really liked about Space Quest was um, there was this narrator, and uh, wherever you went. You know, in those old point-and-click adventures, you had, uh, you could touch something, mm -hmm, watch right. something, yeah. or, and you know, the narrator always commented on what you were doing. So, for example, if you if you tried to pick up something that you can't use in the game, then the narrator said something like, "Don't touch that. We don't know where you've been." <laughs> things like that. Seriously, do you actually think this guy has time to talk to you? He's too busy being dead. Okay, uh, I recognize that from uh, point-and-click adventures that I've yeah. played. I think it's a typical uh, video game genre that that's uh, specially uh, suitable for, for yeah. a lot of humor. There's a, it's a kind of um, tongue-in-cheek humor, sort of let's not take ourselves too seriously type of humor. Very, very innocent, very harmless. Okay. That that that's kind of lost. I think you don't see it anymore in games or right. anywhere else, except uh, and that would be my third choice, uh, the the Divinity series by our uh, own Belgian company Larian Studios. The latest of their games, apparently, uh, uh, Divinity Original Sin Two, uh, won some major awards. Uh, some people call it the best RPG ever made. Uh, I haven't played it yet, but. Um, but I, I'm very proud of that fact that uh, a Belgian company uh, did so well. But I played uh, all the previous Divinity games. And um, there's a lot of humor in there that I really enjoy. And a lot of it is indeed also that same type of humor. They play around with the fantasy cliches. It, it is a fantasy yeah. universe and they, they use that. And there's a lot of... Um, even though it's a Belgian game, there's a lot of very British humor in it. Right, um, yeah. Sort of slight absurdities and 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 a lot of quite um, highbrow intellectual references. But I mean, in a funny way. I mean, for example, uh, there's this scene where there is a crazy wizard and he does all kinds of spells, but they're they're actually. Um, all kinds of uh, Latin, famous Latin quotes from you know <laughs> um, Ovid and uh, and other uh, you know uh, Roman writers, um, and you know just little things like that. That sort of it's very charming to me. Uh, yeah, I think the writer was a a big fan of James Joyce as well. Yeah, there's a lot of that in there as well. I think. Um, and a lot of lit literary references. A lot of literary references, but but it's not done in this sort of um, snobbish way. It's just it, it's silliness, yeah. and they they pepper it with some some intellectual humor, some but... literary playfulness. Yeah, yeah. Um, for example, um, it also references um, Monty Python a lot, which I think is terribly overrated. But there were a few funny moments in Monty Python, uh, yeah, right. one or two. And, um, for example, in, in one of the Divinity games, you go to, uh, to an inn or a tavern and there's a, a guy, an NPC, and he's called Brave Sir Robin. And <laughs> if you remember in uh, the Monty Python movie, The Quest for the Holy Grail, um, there was this whole song about how Brave Sir Robin ran away. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I guess those, those were the funniest video games that I've played. Okay. Actually, if you would uh, draw a conclusion from your favorites, is it mostly verbal humor then? Yeah, in video games, uh, it's all verbal humor. Um, I, because I think, I mean, slapstick in a video game, I don't really see that working. I know uh, there's this game called uh, Goat Simulator. I've heard of it. Yeah, <laughs> okay. and it's, it's a lot of people say it's very funny. I haven't tried it yet. But it's a bit of a parody of these simulator games you yeah, have all right. kinds of simulator you know uh, airplanes simulator. and yeah and, and even trucks etc but goat simulator is you know um, you you command a goat and <laughs> the whole thing is doing ridiculous things like 
you know, putting the goat in a catapult or hanging it from a helicopter and uh, okay. throwing it through a window and never heard of it. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's a, it's a kind of slapstick. Um, I'm not sure if 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 that's something I would particularly enjoy. I think video games are just graphically still a bit limited, mm -hmm. and so you can't really do very funny stuff with facial expressions. Maybe I'm wrong, but well, yeah, if you if you have a lot of conversations, which is the case in uh, in video games, then uh, you can do a lot of things with verbal humor. So it makes sense, I guess. Yeah. And I, I, I think I just like verbal humor, and also the um, the very concept of humor in games is uh, is is interesting. I think. Anyway, um, I I have another question for you. You know that humor is very often tied to a particular culture. Mm -hmm. um, so, do you think that some cultures are particularly good at humor, or you know? Because a lot of people talk about, you know, British humor, for example. Um, what's your take on that? Well, um, I think for me, uh, I think I like British humor the best. Mm. A lot of people do. I think I do too. Yeah, it's just the the French and Italian kinds of humor. They're kind of lost on me. They're often very much over the top. Uh, like Louis de Funès, he has some kind of uh slapstick vibe uh and and i don't really like that um it's like which is actually british mr bean i never really liked mr bean continue i'm drinking tea awesome tea by the way <laughs> blend tea white czar excellent <laughs> excellent mm. um i never really liked mr bean that much uh compared to other people because it was <laughs> It was a lot of... <laughs> I don't think many people would like Mr. Bean a lot if, if they met him. <laughs> <laughs> well, perhaps. But I mean, the the, the television show um, mm. and, and there were even movies uh, as well. Because it was all about his facial expression. And I'm not saying that Rowan Atkinson does not have a lot of very funny facial expressions. It's just that's that alone doesn't really make it funny for me and in that way i i preferred blackadder which was a uh, verbal humor by the same actor and and i thought that was much funnier than mr bean actually well i think blackadder also works with because of facial expressions but they are a lot more subtle like yeah. he raises one eyebrow and it's a I, lot funnier I like than subtlety maybe yeah. it's because i'm flemish <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, I do too. I do too. And and in that respect, uh, Flemish humor is actually getting better. Uh, I'm I'm really starting to appreciate it more and more. Um, there are there are more and more um, series uh, in Flanders that that are really intended to be a kind of comical series, and they're not doing a very bad job. I think it's uh, it's actually going there the right way. There are some really way. good ones. Yeah. Uh, like in the Gloria was quite funny, um, I, but what I notice a lot about Flemish humor is that it's almost always based on situations where people are humiliated. It's based on shame. Right? Yeah, <laughs> that's true. It is, isn't it? Bec it's it's socially we... awkward stuff. That's where our humor comes from. Right. Almost always. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because we are kind of socially awkward. <laughs> it's true, yeah. Belgian people are very, very introverted and very... Compared to the Dutch, we're really different. Yeah. And and I also noticed the Dutch have a, have a different sense of humor. It's much more extreme and much more in your face. Maybe, yeah, more explicit. So. Yeah. They're like... Uh, I mean... I, I don't want to generalize, of course, so I'm sorry to any Dutch listeners, but I have the impression that sort of shocking, vulgar statements are more sort of accepted in the Netherlands. Yeah, I think so. In language as well. I, I, I was reading um, a youth uh, book, a uh, novel for, uh, for youngsters the other day uh, in Dutch uh, by a Dutch writer, and... I do notice that uh, 
they use a lot of words that are yeah. shocking to me, but are very neutral uh, in uh, the Netherlands. Yeah, I'm, 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 you know, I'm very old fashioned. I, I, that's the one thing that to me sort of I felt was a bit too bad about the movie Team America. I really enjoyed a lot of elements in it, but the the vulgar, explicit stuff that in 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 the language particularly that really made me cringe that really bothered me true but the fact that it were puppets kind of made up for something <laughs> it made it less uh in your face more covered in a way and i agree with you by the way when it comes to french and italian humor you know the movie la vita e bella uh, life is beautiful mm -hmm. was praised a lot because it dared to combine the very serious topic of the Holocaust with uh, some silly humor mm -hmm. and did that in a way that was humane and life-affirming. And I get that. And I'm not saying it's a bad movie, but to be honest, I only start liking the movie from the moment when he enters the concentration camp. Don't get me wrong, not because I enjoy that so much, but, uh, but because... That's where the emotional core of the movie yeah. is. And before that, the first half hour is is a whole bunch of typical sort of Italian comedy that is totally not funny to me, you know, yeah. with a, a, a horse painted green and all this silly slapstick stuff. That... Yeah, maybe it's also kind of lost on us because uh, I think humor is also a bit culturally determined for mm. a big part. So I think uh, what you think is funny is also influenced by the culture you grew up in. Mm. Um, That's true. Same goes for time, I, I think. Uh, what you or people in general thought was funny years ago might not actually be funny anymore these days. And I think oh, yeah. what you mentioned before, um, I think Monty Python is a good example of that. Because yeah, there were a lot I, of absolutely. things I remember I thought really funny when I was a teenager. And then I watched them again and I, yeah. it was kind of lost on me. <laughs> the thing is, uh, not just Monty Python, but a lot of older um, comedy shows, mm -hmm. um, they are very, very slow. And you, you get what the joke is after, you know, mm -hmm. half a minute. But then it just keeps on going and going. And yeah. you, you feel like, I know where you're going with this. Just move on. Or it's not can, funny anymore. You can see the joke coming yeah. from miles away. Yeah. Okay. Time for one more question. Okay. Um, um, another question. So maybe, um, Domin, what's your favorite kind of humor? Off the top of my head, uh, you have... Things like black humor, absurd humor, slapstick, verbal humor, uh, parodies, character humors, stand-up comedy perhaps, sarcasm. Uh, there are so yeah. many types okay. of humor. Are there any things you prefer or that, that don't really work for you? Or? I'm going to start by saying what I don't like. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because that's, that's how I roll. That's easier, <laughs> right? <laughs> that's easier. Um, I don't like, I generally don't like stand-up comedy for reasons that I've mentioned before. I think a lot of stand-up comedy is just, you know, these loud egomaniacs uh, who <laughs> stand, who are there on a stage saying, look at me, I'm so funny. I'm going to be funny for yeah, I'm one going hour. To, <laughs> I'm going to be funny now. So for me, a lot of the humor is already lost by the sheer fact that, you know, there's this guy standing there and... And he says, watch out, this is going to be funny, you know. And then a lot of it is just someone talking about himself. And it's, it, it's, a lot, it's sort of very egotistical and a lot of the times very vulgar also. And, and I, so I don't like stand-up comedy. Are there exceptions? Except, oh. yeah, there are a few exceptions. There are a few uh, that I did like um, and I did enjoy. And they were always... They always did something different with the formula. For example, there was a Belgian comedian, Wim Helsen. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, again, I regret some of the vulgarities, but but he does have go funny stuff uh, going for him when he... Uh, because of the fact that he... The show that I saw, he delivered it as 
as a story. The whole thing was a story that he was telling. Right, just I one big that. story. And it all ties up together at the end. And it comes to a sort of climax. And it had these recognizable elements as yeah, well, right? Very, it was again very much based on social awkwardness. Yeah, I think it, was, it started off in a, in a cafe where yeah. he had to go to the toilet. Yeah. And it wasn't clear to him mm. where the, the queue was. So, and, and he, it was an, an urgent... Right, yeah. Uh, and then <laughs> he had the, an urgent call of nature. And he was very angry about the fact that there was a queue and that it was not fair. And Yeah, yeah there was, was whole... it a queue and, and where was the queue? And yeah. it, it, was, it was so silly. Uh, I, I remember that. I thought it was really that, fun yeah. too. And also, I, once I saw this guy in a, in a comedy show. It was a long, long time ago. I've never seen him since. And he's sort of... It's like he mocked the very concept of stand-up comedy. He came on stage and he was dressed in this very boring suit and had a very boring expression. He looked like an accountant. And he <laughs> stood there with his arms with his arms straight and his back straight and he stood there and he just said, I'm going to tell some jokes. Joke number one. And then he told a joke. Joke number two. He told another joke. And it was actually <laughs> funny. <laughs> it was actually funny because, because you didn't expect it. You, you don't expect that right. and and it's and his delivery made it funny because the jokes themselves were very simple lame jokes but there was something about the incredible deadpan delivery that made that work that's maybe something else you have um often intentional humor mm. which can be kind of force down your throat yeah uh, you have to like this you have to laugh at this and then mm. you have this unintentional kind of comedy which is usually funnier i mean look at the room uh which the is room yeah that's a one movie of the funniest that, that's supposed to be a, a drama yeah and it was it was obviously intended that way but yeah. because it's so bad it's hilarious and you yes. just cannot stop laughing <laughs> That's true, that's true. And a lot of that comes from just the personality that it exudes. And, then, and, and with that, I want to actually answer your question because I still haven't answered it. Right. What type of humor uh, do I like best? For me, it's character humor. For me, the best humor, the, mo the funniest stuff usually comes from how people react to certain situations. Right. For example, slapstick um, in itself isn't funny to me. It's, I don't think it's funny to see someone fall, but I do think it's funny son loves to see some... Yeah, but he's too. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think it's funny to see someone fall and then try to sort of restore his dignity right, somehow. Yeah. <laughs> and have this sort of... This expression of, uh, you know, I, I didn't stumble. It was deliberate. Yeah, and, pretend it never happened. Yeah. yeah. So it, the, the character element can make slapstick funny for me. Um and in general, uh, I think that's my favorite kind of humor, uh, verbal humor. Um, a lot of that comes from character as well. As for absurdities, um, when I was a teenager, I loved absurd humor a lot. I loved just, you know, completely impossible, utterly ridiculous situations. That changed as I grew older. Um, I think it's a phase you go through, I'm not sure. Really? Oh. I can still enjoy it from time to time. Yeah. yeah, I mean, but it's not just, yeah, it's, I had a friend. But it's um, hard to do. And uh, he, he may actually listen to this episode, but there, I had a friend and we spent a lot of time um, making, you know, funny uh, little radio dramas um, when we were teenagers and uh, writing funny stories, etc. And they, a lot of the time they were, just these ridiculously over the top, super extreme <laughs> things. Like, for example, we once made a little audio drama about um, Hercule Poirot from Agatha Christie's novels uh, turning into a robot and going to the moon. And the Dalai Lama was there, and he was he was building a super weapon, trying to destroy the world. Uh, and we thought it was hilarious. And now, yeah, I. Not so much. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, you know, you change yeah, as you grow older, I, I think. Um, I think a lot of it for me is as I grow older, I sort of see through a lot of humor. I sort of see the mechanisms behind it. Mm. It's like horror. It doesn't work anymore, 
because you know exactly how it is constructed. Yeah, yeah and when it comes to horror, they they kind of try to they kind of try to push the boundaries. Uh, and and at some point, I was a really big horror fan, but at some point there was these uh, horror movies like like The Wrong Turn, which was still okay and the hills of eyes and hostel and then you had the strangers and it, it all it got more and more twisted and dark and i kind of mm. i'm kind of scared to go to the theaters and and watch a modern horror movie right now because mm. they're, they're really pushing the boundaries and i don't know whether i can still well, take it <laughs> it seems to me that they've sort of more recently taken a turn away from the really extreme what they call torture porn stuff which i think it's good that they went away from that yeah and they've returned to sort of the classical um sort of exorcism and ghost stories type stuff yeah that i can handle. which i prefer <laughs> also but um but the problem with that is you sto you sort of start seeing through the, the mechanisms you know the, the jump scares the you know, the, oh, there's someone in the window, there's someone on the background, and they have a scary mask. And right. uh, after a while, you start sort of, you know, you know that it's... Uh, Some of the uh, more yeah. recent uh, exorcism movies were really well done. I just think um, there's a there's this line that you better not cross. It, it's, it's when it starts getting disgusting. Yeah, I completely agree. I just cannot yeah. take it anymore. Like, no, no. I, I, I never, I've never watched or dared to watch the human caterpillar because what i've heard about it i wouldn't be interested and i just i think once you 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 watched that movie and it's it's really disgusting you cannot unwatch it yeah. it's there forever and that's why i kind of skipped well skipped it's it. it's something that uh james cameron said in the making of aliens was uh he said that there is um fear mm -hmm. and there is disgust and those are two completely different emotions. Yeah. And he, and he had both, right? Yeah, but he said that he wanted to emphasize the element of fear, and he, yeah. and therefore he he didn't go for super over the top gory stuff. Not too but much more gore. for tension. <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm referring to when the alien comes out of a human body, the sort of jumping yeah. out of the the chest. He made that very brief. Yeah, it's more scary than disgusting. Yeah. It's yeah. about it's about the threat of that and not right. about seeing it in all its right. gory glory. Oh, I agree. <laughs> I, I like that movie. Um, but now we're talking about horror. <laughs> no, but uh, the, the reason why I brought it up was because I think uh, the same goes for humor. Uh, you start yeah. uh, seeing all these patterns in, in, in things that are funny. And then sometimes... Um, more modern series try to go past that and and and, mm -hmm. and make it more original or do yeah. new stuff with it and and it it might work but it might not. I I've never understood the idea of uh, shock value in hum trying to shock through humor I don't think a lot of people seem to think that that's sort of a, a, an obligation of humor it has to shock people or something i don't get that uh, to me shock is a completely different emotion than uh, than you know being entertained by humor uh -huh. it's just got nothing to do with each other so these sort of movies where they they push the boundaries by going for really disgusting things i just don't think it's funny Right, but on the other hand, um, when when you have this culture where people are very easily offended in every way, then it's really hard to yeah, be humorous anymore. That's also true. But I think the, the point is, humor should try to be funny, not try to offend. Right. Um, and, and you shouldn't be too, offend too quickly offended by humor. I agree. But, it goes both but ways. Yeah, it sort of goes both ways. Yeah, there are, I think there are a few uh, like stand-up comedians who manage to be funny without insulting anyone. Yeah, and like Bill Bailey. I like him also. That's actually remarkable because you, don't, you don't get to see that a lot. It is, and it's very refreshing and it's, it's, very, it's very pleasant to, to see that. Uh, Bill Bailey, for example, 
I really liked some of the stuff that he did. Um, he just tells a, a typical story from three guys going to the pub, um, but he tells it in the style of Geoffrey Chaucer. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's yeah, that's funny. It's just I I think I'm I'm sort of I'm a goody two shoes type of guy, and therefore um, the sort of humor that I like tends to be more on the really innocent, <laughs> corny Aww. side. Maybe I I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I just I don't like I don't like uh, like I don't like gore in horror I don't like f- offensive. Uh, so you're not a big fan of sarcasm then in in humor. Uh, no, actually, um, there was a time when I when I was um, I mean Blackadder was my favorite show. It's full of sarcasm. Yeah, it's, and, it's pretty sarcastic. But, well, first of all, um, the sarcasm in Blackadder is actually still pretty. It's it's still pretty lightweight compared to what you get these days. And um, it's also, as I grow older, and now that I'm a father and I, I have a little kid, and I, I, see, I see our son, Ronan, and I see how innocent he is. There, is. there is no cynicism in him. There's no sarcasm. There's no... He doesn't know these things. And that's very touching to me that that's innocence and it makes me sort of yearn for that again yeah and and and, and therefore i want to avoid all the the sort of the, the bitterness and ugliness that we've sort of come to maybe embrace as a kind of um coping mechanism maybe right so um could we say that we have about Three conclusions uh, to what we've uh, been talking about. I don't know. What are your three conclusions? Uh, I would say that um, we both agree that an element of recognizability is very important to uh, to humor. Yes. And uh, that that often comes from character humor as well. Of course, we we've talked about Peppa Pig in the the storytelling uh, podcast um, uh, children's TV shows. Yeah. And um, we mentioned that uh, part of the reason why it's funny is because there are these recognizable elements uh, yes. to children's behavior and parents' behavior, and that's what makes it charming and funny. Yes. So. And also, um, like the 80s parody, it kind of comes down on recognition, right? You recognize the situations, yeah, the clothing, definitely. The, the songs from your, uh, from your childhood. Um, and it's also a bit about playing with conventions, uh, I think. Like in Team America, um, they kind of make a parody of all these blockbuster conventions and, and typical yeah. elements that you recognize. And they they kind of make it clear to you what's inherently absurd about them. By yeah. Them. I think uh, something that we haven't mentioned yet, if I'm allowed to... Okay interject um i think a lot of the time the funniest stuff is in um is in in a movie or a book or something that isn't all about being funny it isn't a comedy but it's uh, just a normal story and then there are funny moments in it Mm -hmm. those are i think the best humor that tends to be much better than the sort of humor you get in a dedicated comedy, so to speak. Right, yeah. That's the, the second uh, conclusion I wanted to draw. Oh, okay. Uh, it's a contrast. Right, okay. Um, that usually the things that are intended to be just funny uh, turn out to be less funny than than a funny moment within a, a dramatic scene or, or something else. Yeah. Like, like, for example, in The Lord of the Rings, they, when they have this uh, Legolas-Gimli dynamic, which really, which really works in yeah. a very dramatic story. Yeah, and, that's and true. The, when they the start Mary you know, sort of playing games, like who yeah. can shoot the most orcs. And, yeah. Right. Well, actually, the, yeah. the fate of the world is at, at stake. Yeah. Uh, and, and Merry and Pippin fulfill right, the, same, yeah. the same dynamic. It's, it's, it really I works. I think I've broken something. <laughs> and then he pulls out this carrot. Uh, yeah. yeah. There's actually, um, we recently saw the movie Red Dragon, remember? Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's the prequel to The Silence of the Lambs, so it's, it's supposed to be this dark psychological thriller. 
But the opening scene of the movie, um, I hadn't expected that, but I thought it was hilarious. It was really <laughs> funny. It's It shows uh, Hannibal Lecter. I mean, when you sh go see that movie, you know Anthony Hopkins, Hannibal Lecter. He's a cannibal, you know that. Um, and so you see him uh, going to a concert, watching uh, a classical symphony. And he, you see he's, you see that he's he sort of, he's got his eye on this one sort of slightly chubby uh, <laughs> orchestra <laughs> musician. Next scene, he's at a fancy dinner party at his home and they're talking about, and you know, he's pouring wine and everybody's eating and they're talking about this missing musician and... Um, and how his uh, parties are the, the, yeah. the best time <laughs> of the year. They yeah. look forward to his, uh, yeah, yeah. his little yeah. party and every year. And then this sophisticated society lady asks, you know, oh, uh, Dr. Lecter, do tell us what's in this delightful stew you've made. Uh, and then he says, oh, uh, I, I wouldn't tell you because then you wouldn't want to eat it anymore. And, <laughs> you know, as an audience, you know exactly what's going on. Um, and they don't. And I thought that was actually, it, I guess it's black humor, dark humor, but it, it was subtle and it was very tongue in cheek. And I thought it was very funny. Yeah. Because um, of the contrast, uh, again, because it's these, it's this um, psychological thriller, and you don't expect a funny scene in this kind of genre, especially at the beginning. Mm. No, exactly, yeah. And that's what makes it funnier, actually, yeah. yeah. Um, I think... So the, the first conclusion was uh, recognizability uh, is important, then uh, contrast. Mm -hmm. to something else. Uh, I think a third uh, conclusion we can draw is that good humor comes from great storytelling. Yeah, it's like the, the Wim Helsen thing we mentioned. Um, the fact that he tells a story is what makes it funny. A lot of stand-up comedy is just some guy giving his observations yeah. about, you know, life and society. And that's not as funny to me as someone yeah. who actually tells a story. Or they handle a topic, they yeah. move on to the next topic. Yeah. They're funny about that, yeah. and they move on to the next topic. Yeah, right. This was different, and I like that. I think, well, storytelling is all about delivery, it's about building up to a climax, and, and humor is very similar. Uh, you know, a, any joke, any good joke is funny because of the build-up and the climax and the, the timing, the right element at the right time. Um, right. So that's why you have people who can who can tell a good joke because they're really good at the delivery, yeah. and then you have people who are really bad at telling jokes. Yeah. They 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 spoil the ending before they can yeah. they can start building the joke yeah. up, and or, that or, makes it funny for <laughs> because it's awkward. Yeah, or or they they take a build up that's too long and too drawn out for a joke a punchline that isn't worth it. That's another one. Yeah, another mistake. That's, you know... Too many details. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, like in 1945, there was yeah. this monk in the, a yeah. distant uh, city called... There's a, I think that's typical of the sort of jokes you get on the calendar. Yeah. Uh, we have this calendar with jokes on it. It's a typical uh, Belgian thing, I think. Maybe they have it in, in the Netherlands also. I'm not sure. I don't know. Anyway, we have a calendar with jokes. And people are always talking about that as an example of bad humor um they they say it's calendar humor yeah. uh, and the reason i think is because what you get on the calendar also always is a very lame predictable punchline yeah. but it's preceded by this whole you know this whole introduction that's just the, the punchline isn't worthy of that introduction but the joke might have been funny if you had inserted it in the middle of a longer conversation. Yeah, As a right. sort of aside, it might have been a little bit funny. So, um, what we would like you to write in the comment section is... Uh, what are your funniest memories from various entertainments? Uh, that's the first question we want to ask you. The second is... Uh, do you want to add anything about humor in entertainment other than movies or video games? But because mm -hmm. we realize that we've been kind of limited when it comes to that. We, we only have a limited time to talk about humor as well. So um, if you want to add something uh, to that, uh, be our guest. We're really curious about your reactions. And uh, what is your preferred kind of humor? 
What do you like particularly? Yeah, uh, those are all good questions. And um, if you uh, like what we do with this podcast, please like us on Facebook. Um, it's a place where you can like us. Um, you can also follow us on Twitter, although we don't tweet a lot, <laughs> but uh, not lately. maybe we should, we wanna... but I, I don't want to go on to Twitter. That's a problem. We, I, we I think it's a terrible that. medium. <laughs> okay. We want to increase that. Yeah, but I mean, definitely <laughs> subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, comment there, um, send us an email, send us a drawing, um, <laughs> don't send us a creepy letter with, you know, letters that you've pasted from various <laughs> newspapers. <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, don't do that. <laughs> and don't invite us for uh, your um, dinner party where you're actually serving your best friend. No, don't do that either. Okay, so uh, next week we'll be back uh, with a new topic in our storytelling podcast Extravaganza. Thanks for listening. Bye.